The scenes that traders and workers of 10 duty-free shops at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport woke up to Thursday morning. The aftermath of a late-night demolition ordered by the Kenya Airport's authority at the shops that had been leased to businessman Kamlesh Patni. Scenes that were too much to bear for some of the traders, with reports indicating that the eviction was extended to shops that had been leased to Patni at the Wilson Airport, as well as the Moy International Airport, Mombasa. All the traders and workers of the 10 duty-free shops could do was to count losses and salvage whatever they could, with most of them claiming that looters had taken advantage and made away with valuables. We were given 30 minutes to clear. Uh, after we clear, then they started demolishing. And then here we are, jobless. Hungry? We want to know where do they want us to go. We are more than 300 people here. And that is family of how many people? How many people are going to suffer because of this? More than 2,000. That is plus our family, plus our mates, plus everything. Kenya Airport's Authority, however, insists that Patni's lease of six and a half years that was entered to in 2007 had expired at the stroke of midnight Wednesday and was under no obligation to extend it. Patni and his legal team, however, accused the airport's management team of malice. Even if a lease expires and there is a, a tenant in occupation, you don't invade the premises at midnight and vandalize, cut away the goods, it's their goods, and destroy the premises. That is not how business is conducted. The airport's authority says Patney's duty-free shops had occupied 70% of the space allocated to duty-free shops at the airport and hampered the process of expanding and modernizing the airport. Senior sources at the KAA disclosed that Patney had for six months tried to convince the authorities to extend the lease with no success since the authority wanted to use the space occupied by his shops to renovate and expand terminals 1 and 2 and separate departing passengers from the arriving passengers to ease congestion at JKIA. And as an investor, it does not give us confidence uh, to run our businesses when our businesses are not secured. But as the traders and workers who earn a livelihood from the shops counted their losses, Patney and KA were facing off on the legality of the eviction and the contest is headed to the corridors of justice. Patney insists that he had secured a high court order dated 29th of July 2013, barring the airport's authority from terminating his lease or evicting him until a case he has filed is hard and determined. The matter was to be mentioned on Thursday next week. Kenya Airport's authority, however, says it had not been served with the court order by Wednesday evening. Yes, they were served. They kept on feigning the absence of senior officers who could sign, the absence of the legal officer who could do, uh, actually receive, and making it difficult uh, for, 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 for us to have their signature. And, in, in, uh, and doing that in an effort, and that is impunity. Patney is no stranger to controversy over the ownership of the multi-billion shillings due to free shops at the airport. He estimates the losses occasioned by last night's demolition and evictions at $6 million or 534 million shillings at the exchange rate of 89 shillings to the U.S. dollar. Francis Gashuri, Citizen Live at 9.